Welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, my guest today is Kim Murphy. She's been on the show before, and today she is going to be making vegan air fried chicken strips, but they're vegan, of course, with yum yum sauce. And she has this wonderful book called Plant Powered, which we'll talk about. And she has a free boot camp coming up. She's going to tell you about you can register. Please welcome her back to the show. Hi, Kim. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me back. I love it. Awesome. Thank you. So what have you been up to since the last time you've been on the show? Oh my gosh, so many things. Um, but yeah, the challenge coming up, that has been a big focus right now. So I've been definitely working on that and testing out recipes. And um, today's uh, two recipes are actually two of the VIP recipes. So you kind of get a you know a sneak peek um, of what we're going to be doing. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Well, nice. Very good. So I, in case they, you, you, if you want to start the recipe right away, I don't know how long it takes, or maybe, you know, you have to tell your, tell your vegan or plant-based story because people yeah. like to know when you went vegan, why, if you have kids, are they vegan? You got pet, you know, tell the whole story. Yeah. The recipes are super fast, so we can totally chat. Um, so I went plant-based, gosh, it's been over about over five years ago, I lost my dad to Alzheimer's and that really sent me down a path of kind of exploration of, you know, I don't want to end up like that. And at the time I was, I was already experiencing brain fog. I was overweight. I was tired. You know, I just wasn't feeling great. And so everything I researched just kept pointing back to eating whole food plant-based. And so I started on that journey, told my husband, I was like, honey, <laughs> I know you love me. So we're going to do this. And he has been very supportive. Um, yeah, my, this is how I cook, uh, for my family. So they eat plant-based now out of the house. I can't really control what my teenagers do all the time as much as I'd love to, but, um, but yeah, we, we are a, a plant-based family and, um, it's been, it's been amazing. I've lost, I lost 20 pounds, 17 inches, kept it off, you know, without the hunger and the deprivation, all, you know, all the stuff that, you know, you know, you just get to eat more, um, feel amazing. Brain fog is gone. And so kind of through that journey is what led me to create my own business, Simply Plant-Based Kitchen, because I just wanted to spread the message and, you know, tell everybody I knew, um, especially as like, I get older and I see more and more of my friends being diagnosed with different chronic diseases, breast cancer. I've just seen, you know, so many of my friends. And so I just think like, we need to spread the message of, you know, there's so much power in plants, you know, we can be plant powered and make a big difference in our health and, you know, what happens to us. We are not, you know, at the destiny of our genes. We have a lot of control over, you know, what our genes, how they express. And so, um, yeah, that's what I've been doing the past five years. And it's been, it's been an amazing journey. That's fantastic. I love to hear. Is this your first book? It is. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I published very, very, I love the cover color. Very yeah. cool. Tell me about it. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, just, um, it's part of my story and, you know, a lot of science and, you know, the evidence-based med medicine about, um, you know, plant-based eating. Um, and, but it's also gives you kind of a guide of how to get started, you know, and I'm going to kind of go through a few tips today as well. You know, how you can get started to not feel so overwhelmed. And, you know, a lot of people are wanting to make a transition, but it's so kind of so much information out there. It's kind of scary. So I tried to, you know, make it as easily digestible as possible. And, um, there's actually, if you get the book, there's a link where you can get some bonus recipes to get you started. Um, so it's been, it's been great. It's been on the, uh, Amazon bestseller list in vegan diet since it was published in June. So that's been really amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. That's wonderful. It says on the back, which you have this nice picture of you and guys, what celebrity does she look like? I'm thinking it might be a singer that I'm thinking, but it says Kim Murphy is a certified plant-based health coach. What does that mean? Do you coach people individually groups? Like you're going to be doing the boot camp? Yeah, so I do mostly group coaching. I have done one-on-one -on -one coaching, but right now I'm doing mostly group coaching because I can reach so many more people. Um, and I really love the group atmosphere and community that we've kind of developed in my program, Plant Powered Life. And so 
Um, yeah, that's basically what I do. I, I certified plant-based health coach so that I went to the, um, got my plant-based certificate from the T. Colin Campbell Center of Nutrition Studies through eCornell and then my health coaching certification through the Institute of Integrated Nutrition. So it kind of puts those things together with both the plant-based and the health coaching. And so um, in my program, Plant Fire Life, you know, I'm helping people learn how to start this lifestyle and keep it going and, you know, deal with setbacks and learn new recipes. And we have a wonderful community that's really supportive of each other. Um, and so I do coaching calls and cooking demos every month. And so the challenge coming up is kind of like a little taste of that. So the five days, uh, five day free challenge is going to be um, daily master classes to learn the science and basics, you know, kind of learn the ropes around eating plant based, but then also live cooking demos every day for five days. So and then we have a community with that as well. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait. It was I've done it twice before, and it's just always a great time, and people love it. That's great. You know, I'm taking the Food Revolution six month coaching course, and I'm not really interested in coaching. I'm interested in business, but just the coaching modules I watch, it's like, whoa! I've apparently done everything wrong because you got to apparently meet people where they are and all kinds of stuff. But I agree with you. I like group coaching better than one on one because I think the group there's the group dynamic can really help people be successful really does. Like I've noticed that, that when you're kind of by yourself and you're just talking to one person, they're like, yeah, yeah, but you know, that that'll work for you, to, but not me. So, you know, when they're in a group atmosphere, then they see other people being successful and, you know, getting tips from them. It really does encourage each other and, you know, lifts everybody up and to say, oh my gosh, like all these people are doing this. I can do this too. Um, and I think the, the group coaching model is really just, I think it's very helpful for a lot of people. Yeah. And actually, I was thought about I want to do the, the Food Revolution Network uh, coaching program as well. I've got to just find time to do it. But it's just, that looks amazing. I think, I think well, hey, hey, they're letting people in for another week. You should really consider. Really? It because oh, OK, I'm okay. going to send you I'm going to send you a text you afterwards because they, yeah. they have to, today they just had a welcome. There's no no content, but it just uh -huh. sounds amazing. So, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Cool. cool. So what kind of eater are you? Simple, complicated? I'm very simple, simply plant-based kitchen, like very simple. Yeah, I love it. I figured with the name, you know, it would make sense. Yeah. You know? no. Yeah. It's like, you know, I will, I will look at recipes and get ideas and inspiration online and I'll see like 15, 20 different ingredients. I'm like, oh, I don't have time for that. <laughs> you know, it's like simple as best. I've got kids, I'm busy, you know, I've got to be able to throw things together really quick. Um, and that's what's cool about today's recipe because um, soy curls have been like a game changer. Um, and these, I, I, you don't eat soy, is that right? I, I want to eat soy. I'm allergic and I'm jealous of people that can because I'm wondering, is there anything like a mushroom where they could give us that texture? Because they sound amazing. Yes, I love these. You know, when I first heard about them, I thought, oh, that just sounds like another processed, you know, food. And so I, I but I looked into it. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's actually better than tofu because it's the whole soybean, minimally processed, nothing bad added, nothing bad, you know, good taken away. Um, and they really have a great meaty texture. And not only that, they're pantry staple. So like, you know, I'll buy a month's worth and just keep them in my pantry. Um, Butler is the brand, brand I buy. They're non-GMO, says on their website, they do not use any pesticides from the soy they're source, sourcing from. Um, and you just rehydrate them like we're going to do today. And you can throw them in so many different recipes. And I, it's just been a game changer because, you know, missing that meaty texture, especially with my two boys and my husband, it's like, you know, they grew up with meat. And so trying to have something that subs, that's not just beans is, you know, awesome. That's so cool. And can you buy these in the regular store? Cause I've actually never seen them in the store. I have not either. Uh, I buy them on Amazon. You can actually buy them direct from the Butler website. Um, you can actually buy them in these bags or in big bulk um, boxes. Now, it's best if you buy a whole bunch, you're going to want to either freeze them or refrigerate them so that they definitely last longer. Um, I don't have a second fridge yet. I'm looking into getting one for my garage. And when I do, that's what I'm going to do because it's a lot cheaper to buy them, you know, in the bulk boxes. But I just buy them, you know, in three or six packs on Amazon. You know, it's at my door in two days. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm impressed with Amazon. I mean, I know a lot of people don't like Amazon and I respect that, but I was out of something and I was teaching a class and I just couldn't, I don't live near a store anymore. And it was like here in like two hours. I don't know how they do that. 
I don't either. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. I needed the salt-free mustard and it's like, oh my gosh. And I just looked and they said delivery between 10 and 12. And I'm like, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that well, was awesome. let's go ahead and get started with these uh, vegan chicken strips. Um, super easy. Um, so again, these the butter soy curls are you know they're they come dehydrated, and so you need to rehydrate them. You can do it in water. You can do it in vegetable broth. Today we're going to do a mixture of water and vegan bouillon. This is the better than bouillon, no chicken base. Um, has a little bit. I feel it has a little bit more of that kind of chicken flavor that people look for. Um, but you could also, if you can't find this, I had to buy it on Amazon. I couldn't find the no chicken base um, at my local stores. So um, if you can't find it, you can always just do vegetable broth. I do that a lot when I'm rehydrating. Um, so we're going to do just one teaspoon of the no chicken base because it is a little higher in sodium, so I don't use much. And after you rehydrate the soy curls, um, we actually you actually squeeze out probably about half. So that reduces the sodium as well. So I'm just gonna whisk this in here to kind of create our broth. When does the boot camp start? January 29th. So oh, two weeks. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. We already have tons of people signed up. It's going to be so much fun. How long okay. did you to write your book? Uh, about a year. <laughs> that was, uh, uh, I know people, and me too. I'm actually sometimes yeah. longer. People don't realize it takes a while. Oh. I had, I mean, you know, I, I had no idea it was going to take, it was, so, you know, it's such a, uh, just a mental game, you know, just to sit down and just so much information and research that you have to do. And yeah, people don't realize how hard writing a book is. <laughs> so I was so glad when it was finally done. I was just like, hallelujah. <laughs> so I had two cups of water with one teaspoon of the better than bouillon mixed together. And now on these soy curls, I did pick out the larger pieces um, from the bag. So this is a, um, the, a bag is eight ounces. And so this recipe is actually four ounces. And so what I did was I picked out the larger pieces um, that'll be more like kind of that chicken strip and they will expand. So they still look kind of small, uh, but they'll expand once we rehydrate them. And so this is uh, about a half a bag of the larger pieces. We're just gonna pour the broth over. And we're just going to let them soak for about 10 minutes. Sometimes I don't, a lot of times I don't even wait 10 minutes because it just happens so fast. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Do you love your air fryer? I do. And I actually got a new one for Christmas. This is the new one. I got the Ninja Max uh, with the Max Crisp. Um, so if you want to do frozen veggies or frozen potatoes, you can uh, do the max crisp um, and that works for frozen items. So that's really cool. Um, and my mom actually bought it for me for my Christmas present and I love it. So um, it's been a lot of fun. So while our um, soy curls are rehydrating, we're going to kind of make the dry batter that we're going to coat them in. And we're going to do three tablespoons of whole wheat flour, or you could do chickpea flour uh, for gluten-free or any kind of gluten-free flour that you want. So I'm going to do three tablespoons of whole wheat flour. If somebody's gluten-free, can they use a gluten-free flour? Yes. Yes, you can. Absolutely. And then we're gonna do some uh, cornmeal, two tablespoons of cornmeal. I love cornmeal. It makes things so, I love the texture it gives to food. I do too. It's like a Southern, you know, gives it that Southern crunchy flavor. Um, and then two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. And then we're going to do one tablespoon of garlic powder. 
I love me some garlic powder. Now one tablespoon of onion powder. And we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of poultry seasoning, which is not is which is vegan. It's just a mix of poultry, not a mix of poultry, mix of seasonings. Um, but it's uh, let's see what this one is says what it's on. But it's usually like yeah, thyme, sage, marjoram, rosemary, black pepper, and nutmeg is this mixture. So just a quarter teaspoon of poultry seasoning. I love poultry seasoning. I love, I'm allergic to black pepper. I have a lot of allergies apparently from birth and uh, mm -hmm. local spicery makes a wonderful one without black pepper, or at least oh. they make it for me, customizing it. It's nice. one of my favorite seasonings. It makes everything taste like Thanksgiving. It does. Yeah. It's a great, I love that smell. Um, and then I've got the Tony Sachere's no salt Cajun um, seasoning blend, Creole cuisine, but salt free. And I, I put two teaspoons in here, but it does have a little bit of a spice to it. So if you want less spice, you know, you could do just one teaspoon. But I like just a little bit of a spice, it has a great flavor to it. So I'm gonna do two teaspoons. And then I'm gonna add just a quarter teaspoon of salt or you can totally omit this. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Cajun uh -huh. seasoning in the oh, air. Where, where do you get that seasoning? Let's see. I, I can't remember. I bought this at Walmart or bought it online on Amazon, but it's the Tony Ch Chacheres. I think that's how you pronounce it. Ch Chacheres. Kind of a Louisiana Creole seasoning, but you got to look for the salt free because their normal one is, is, you know, has a lot of added sodium. And then we're just going to mix all that together. The way. We're going to check on our check on our chicken chicken strips rehydrating. So they really just absorb the liquid and they expand and they soften up. So usually I wait you know, five, 10 minutes. Um, and then what we're gonna do is, and I'm gonna do this over my sink, is actually I could probably do it over, let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's use the colander to drain. And then you can also squeeze them out just a little bit, kind of get a little bit more of that moisture out. And then we're gonna toss them in the breading. And just get them good and coated. Mm, I love the smell of that mix of spices, especially the, the Creole seasoning in there. It smells great. Okay, so we're gonna air fry these and usually usually I do about um, a half a bat, a half a bowl um, per you know time. So you want to split these out. Um, make sure you spread them around your air fryer. That way they get good and crispy. Okay. And we're going to do <laughs> 375. Oops, get back to my temperature. There we go. Still learning my new air fryer. So 375, and we're only going to do five minutes. So it's really fast. All right. So while that's way going, we're going to make the yum yum sauce, which if you've ever been to, you know, a Japanese restaurant, they, a lot of times they'll serve you yum yum sauce. And it's just a great kind of like 
tangy, sweet um, sauce that um, is really yummy, but we can make it vegan and oil-free and it tastes amazing. So I never heard of yum yum sauce. Really? Yeah. yeah. Kind of a creamy, creamy dip. I'm not trying to think of like what to compare it to. I have a yum yum. I have a yummy sauce recipe, but I never heard of it. What is the base of it? Is it like a thousand island? Is it like a you know, um I'm trying to think of what they probably use like kind of a you know, oil or dairy base to it, but we're going to do cashews and have some uh, maple syrup, some rice vinegar, little soy sauce, little sriracha if you want some spice. Um, so theirs is probably, you know, dairy based and, you know, things like that. So maybe, maybe mayonnaise or yogurt. Um, and you can do um, unsweetened plant-based yogurt if you don't want to do nuts. You could try that as well. Um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So um, now I have a Vitamix, which I adore. Um, so I don't need to soak my nuts or anything like that. So if you don't have a Vitamix, then definitely soak your cashews for, you know, about 20 minutes in warm water to soften them up. will help it blend and get a little bit more creamy. So we're going to go ahead and put in um, a half. This is a three quarter cup, actually three quarters cup of uh, raw unsalted cashews. Let's and then we're gonna do a half a cup of uh, low sodium vegetable broth. You have a brand you like? Really? I mean, I, I shop at different stores. I just look for whatever is lowest sodium and usually organic if, if they have it in stock. Um, I use the Central Market brand at my local HEV store a lot. Um, that one's really good. So I just, I mean, I will look for whatever I could find wherever I'm at. Um, so that's probably my favorite brand is probably the Central Market, but that's local kind of to Texas and HEB. Um, and then we're going to do two teaspoons of tomato paste. Give that out. Go. And then two tablespoons of rice vinegar. Do you do, you do any kind of batch cooking? Oh yeah, absolutely. I feel like we can't survive if we don't do some sort of, you know, batch cooking. Um, you know, for the week, especially, I mean, my kids and my husband, you know, they're at school and work. And so, you know, I'll always batch their lunches for them. I send, send their lunches with them to school or work. And so I usually Sundays are my batching day to, you know, prep the fruit, make some either potatoes or grains, um, make a big pot of soup. If we're going to do soup for lunches, um, my kids love vegan mac and cheese. So I'm usually doing that. Um, yeah, definitely batch cook, got to. And then we're gonna do uh, two tablespoons of lemon juice. And then two teaspoons of sriracha. Now, if you don't like it spicy, you can leave it out. Um, I, you know, two teaspoons definitely has some kick to it. So if you want it a little less spicy, then maybe just one teaspoon. I'm going to do two. He means excited to try vegan yum yum sauce. Yes, it's good. It's really good. Um, let's see. And then we're going to do a teaspoon of maple syrup. You could also do date syrup. Throw in some, you know, a couple of dates would be fine too. And then a teaspoon of soy sauce, or you could do coconut aminos. And then we've got some spices. So I've got um, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, 
a half teaspoon of smoked paprika and a half teaspoon of salt. Love smoked paprika. It's so different than regular. It is. It's not even the same whatsoever. I love it. That's a great barbecue flavor to it. All right, so we're gonna blend that. I love how Zoom mutes it. Guys, I have another show at two today. Nick and Thomas, vinegar, spice, and everything nice. Ooh. So we're going to pour a little bit of this in here. And this will thicken up in the fridge because of the nuts as well. Mm. Our first batch is done. Now this new air fryer is definitely, I find that it's more powerful than my old one um, because when I was first testing this out, it took a little bit uh, longer. So, you know, you, you start off with five minutes on with your air fryer. If you want them a little crispier, then, you know, do another two to three minutes. Uh, but I find that this gets it perfect. It, it's crispy on the outside, but still chewy on the inside. Um, so it's really just got this great chicken flavor. Here's a really big piece. You just dip it in your sauce. Mmm. Yum, Sugar. yum. And I bet mm, you can use it on yum. other things. Probably use it on other things as well. Oh, absolutely. Mm, great sauce. You know, you could use it as a, a dressing on a bowl or grain bowl. You could use it with, you know, um, tofu or things like that. Super delicious. Mm. That easy. I mean, it's super simple. Mm. Love it. Now I was also going to talk about um, some different tips to kind of help people get started on their plant-based lifestyle. And so I've got five tips. Um, and number one is slow and steady wins the race. Um, because I know for me that, you know, that whole diet mentality I grew up with of, you know, you got to eat perfect, you know, right off the bat. And there's just so many things to learn about this way of eating that it can be, it can't, you know, it's so overwhelming. It doesn't happen overnight. So I find that most people do really good with, you know, kind of a slow and steady approach. So it gives you time to learn new cooking skills, learn new recipes. Um, and so, you know, you could do things like start with just a meal a day, start with breakfast, you know, figure out some recipes for breakfast, learn how to batch prep them, have them ahead of time, figure out what your tastes are. Um, and then after a couple of weeks, then maybe add on lunch. And then after a couple more weeks, add on dinner. So kind of has that gradual, you know, approach to creating more of a lifestyle versus, you know, a temporary diet that's like, oh, this is too much, it's too stressful. And then you just fall off of it, you know, in a couple of weeks. So taking, definitely taking a slow approach is my first tip. Um, number two is to start with simple swaps. You know, there's so many things that you can do um, to um, today. Like there are so many of those plant-based milks on the market, you know, get you some unsweetened plant-based milk, whatever kind you like, boom, done. Dairy, you know, dairy milk's out of the house, just like that. Um, beans and lentils are great to sub for um, meat. I love canned lentils because you can use them like ground beef. So on taco night, we'll take, a, I'll just take a can of canned lentils, throw it in a pan, add some taco seasoning, some onions, some tomatoes, boom, taco night, done in like 15 minutes. You know, it's that simple. 
Um, some other simple swaps are like these soy curls because they have that, they're super easy to cook with. Um, and you know, you can use them in place where you would have used chicken or steak. I use these to make fajitas. So, um, it's, they're really wonderful. Um, and then using whole grains instead of refined grains. So, you know, brown rice instead of white rice, whole grain bread instead of white bread. You know, those are simple swaps that don't really change you know, how you feel about your food. Does it, you know, it tastes very similar. You can make some of your same recipes and with those simple swaps, you know, it just makes it a little bit, you know, easier transition. Um, and then number three is to focus on adding rather than taking away. You know, again, it's that long-term lifestyle versus diet mentality where, you know, the, the diet industry is all about like, you know, deprivation and, you know, calorie counting and, you know, being very restrictive. And so instead of that, instead of taking all the things out right away, think of adding things in first. So you're crowding out the calories. So for, um, you know, start your meal with a salad or a bowl of soup or a big piece of fruit, you know, snacking on fruit um, during the day instead of chips. And as you add in more of, you know, the healthy foods and eat those first, you know, that crowds out the calories and you're not as hungry for everything else. Um, let's see. And then number four is like kind of what we talked about, you know, do I batch prep? Yes, you got to be prepared. So number four is you got to be prepared because, you know, we don't have a ton of, you know, packaged, processed, whole, you know, whole food plant-based options. We don't have whole food plant-based drive throughs So, if you aren't prepared and have something made or prepared for the week, then, you know, what happens at the end of the day when you're tired and you're hangry and you're just like, I got to eat something now and nothing, you know, is ready to go. Of course, you're going to fall back into old habits of, you know, ordering, you know, delivery or going to the drive through or, you know, frozen processed foods. So, you know, having something prepared on hand, whether it's, you know, just some staples like the, you know, having some potatoes ready to go. You can even microwave a potato in five minutes, you know, and have a have a baked potato. So knowing, you know, quick little tricks like that um, can really save time so that when you're, you know, like, oh, my gosh, I'm hungry. Guess what? You've already got some things that you could make in the fridge, you know, have some quinoa or brown rice already prepped for the week. Have your fresh fruits and veg fresh fruits and veggies already prepped so that they're you know at eye level in your fridge. You can have them on. I always have fruit around my house on the counters, and so that it's just an easy snack to grab. So you know instead of reaching for the chips, reach for the fruit. Um, and then having those pantry and freezer staples on hand is just so key because again you can throw something together in a matter of minutes with you know, some frozen veggies, those steamable bags, frozen fruit, um, canned beans are wonderful. Um, and, you know, you just throw things together and have a quick meal. And then last, number five, is definitely find, you know, community for support and learning. Because again, it's just, there's so much to learn. And there's so much misinformation out there that I find people kind of get in that you know, procrastination, you know, and don't do anything because, you know, you've got so many conflicting information out there. It's hard to like decide, well, this person says this is good. And this person says this is bad. What do I do? You know, you're kind of stuck. And so finding a community of like-minded whole food plant-based people to learn from and lean on and get that support is really important. Um, a lot of times, and I hear this all the time, like, well, I want to eat this way, but the rest of my family doesn't, you know, how does this work? And it can, but it definitely, you need some support and ideas to figure out how you can make that work um, in your family. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I like doing this five day boot camp challenge, because it gives everybody, you know, the right start, the right information, you know, some recipes to get you started. And it has that community support to it. So you can ask questions, get new recipes, get tips, you know, and see that other people are doing it, you know, and gives you the confidence to do it yourself. So, yeah. What do you think is the, the trips people up the most that makes it more difficult for them to do this? I think that, you know, the community support is so important because I think for a lot of people, it's peer pressure and, you know, eating different than other people, maybe even people in their family household, 
you know, some people, I have a very supportive family, other people do not. Like I've literally, it's so sad to hear that, you know, some people's, you know, own family are telling them, you know, you shouldn't do this and they're not supportive. And so, you know, it's that need to fit in, I think. And so being different for a lot of people is really, you know, really holds them back. I mean, it, it sounds silly that what people think of us, you know, can cause us to make different choices, but it really is that kind of that social connection that can be either really good, you know, in the case of like, you know, having a, a great plant-based support group or, you know, detrimental on the other side when you're around a lot of people who don't support you. So I think that's, that's one of the things that really holds people back a lot. Like I want to eat this way. I know it'll make me feel better, but you know, I don't want to be different. My family doesn't eat this way, you know? And so it, it's getting, you know, that support in a community that really, I think encourages a lot of people to make the change. Mm. Donna says your Facebook community is amazing. They are, they are so wonderful. They support each other. Uh, they're super fun. And, you know, it's just really, I think it really makes a big difference, you know, is you don't feel alone, you know, you have somebody to lean on and ask questions. And I didn't have that when I was first starting out, um, even not even five years ago, you know, we're talking 10 years ago when I really kind of dipped my toe in for the first time, you know, that was before Facebook groups, that was before, you know, we had even kind of that online connection and I had nobody, like I, it was me. And so, and I didn't have that support. And so I couldn't keep it going. I think that was the biggest piece for me. Um, and so now that we have, you know, this access to, even just Facebook groups. I mean, it, it sounds like, well, it probably would, you know, think, oh, that's not really that big a deal, but it really is. It makes a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Is that how your uh, challenge is delivered through a Facebook type group or? So we have a Facebook group as part of the community, but um, everything is actually through Zoom. So you can just hop on. You don't have to have Facebook to join. Um, it's just extra. You know, we actually do po post our um, daily challenge assignments. So simple little fun uh, daily assignments to do during the challenge in the Facebook group. And you can comment on that post with, you know, your answer to the question or post a picture of what, you know, of you doing the homework. And those are so much fun to see the like light bulbs go off and like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this. And, you know, I have people go through their pantry and read labels and just really learn what they're eating and understand, you know, what they should be looking for um, and what's good and what's not good. And so it's always just very eye-opening, but the, that part is where the kind of the daily homework assignments are, but you can attend the classes just on Zoom. Nice. And if somebody isn't a beginner, can they still join? Oh, absolutely. Everybody's welcome. We always have a lot of people who need that just, you know, just that extra little reboot, extra little motivation, just want to learn new recipes. And, um, and so we have people from all the way from baby beginners, like I've never eaten plant-based before. And then some people will join and they're, you know, it's part of their, you know, support group is helping others. You know, when you give back to other people, you know, it really helps you too. And so we'll have people join in who've been doing this for 20 years, but they just want to learn some new tips and recipes and encourage, you know, other people. So it's really great, you know, supportive, non-judgmental. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't want to, you know, I'm not perfect. That's okay. Nobody's perfect. So it's a very supportive, wonderful group. Thank you. Question from Susanna. Kim, do you have any suggestions for wooing, ooh, I like that word, older teen boys to this way of eating? She loves, loves the look of the recipe you made and she thinks they'll like it. Yeah, I would say, you know, kind of what you mentioned before, Chef AJ, you got to meet them where they are at. So what are the things that they like to eat? And then are there some little simple swaps that you could do? Could you use soy curls that have that meaty texture? You know, my kids, my oldest is a 15 year old teenager and he loves mac and cheese. So, you know, making a vegan mac and cheese is like, I mean, he literally eats that every day for lunch at school. <laughs> I'm like, are you sure you don't want something different? Nope, that's what I want. Okay. You know, so it's, and asking them questions, what would you like to try, you know? Um, and, but then also being the example, 
you know, rather than preaching. Uh, It's very tricky when it comes to teenagers, especially teenage boys, you know, they want to do their own thing and, you know, be their own man. And so make their own decisions. So giving them choices, but also being the example, you know, eating this way. And I I think that that long-term does more than what we say to them, you know, is what we do. You know, they're watching, watching us. That's cool. Yeah. I think like, I agree with what you said about people don't want to be different because when we lived historically in small little villages, like Dr. Lyle talked about, there's like 30 people, you know, and we were, if you, if you were different than the tribe, you kind of got kicked out of the group, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I find that that's the, the hardest thing I think as my kids have gotten older, um, is that peer pressure of eating different and, um, you know, it's, it's tough, you know, and we just have to be kind of, you know, kind and understanding, but encouraging. And, you know, that's why I keep my house a safe place, a safe space of plant-based eating. And then I hope that, you know, when they're out out away from the family, you know, that they'll make good decisions. And, um, you know, we just have to, we have to accept them where they're at and just encourage them. Yeah. Did they, did they feel any pressure? How old were your kids when you did transition and it, it sounds like your family's very supportive, at least your husband, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, They were, oh, gosh, how old were they? Five years ago. So they would have been, uh, my oldest would have been 10. And then my youngest was seven. So seven and 10. Um, and it was definitely easier. It's been easier for my youngest uh, because he was younger when he started. And so he, you know, and he's just a different personality too. And so he'll, I mean, he's just very like eat vegetables and whatever, you know, he's just very, um, you know, he'll just try whatever pretty much. Um, and I found that it was easier, you know, when they're younger, because they're not out of the house as much, they're not going over friends' houses, um, and things like that. Um, so it's actually been kind of gotten harder you know, as they've gotten older, because they're, you know, they go over to other people's houses and, you know, what are they going to eat? You know, they want to eat like their friends. Um, We do actually have a couple, he has, my oldest has a couple friends who are uh, vegetarian or vegan. So that's been like, like, yes, he's not the only one, you know, kind of thing. And, and it's funny because they'll let their friends try their food, you know, because I send their lunches with them at school. And so they'll be like, yeah, this is vegan. And they'll let somebody try it. And they're like, oh, that's actually pretty good. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that's great. I did, did it, How do you teach them to deal with uh, peer pressure if they get it? I mean, especially if, if there's bullying involved, not to say that happened to your kids, but I've heard of people bullying people for what they eat. Mm-hmm. No, they, they really have it. I think most kids have been just curious, you know, I don't think that they've really ever experienced any kind of like negativity in that way or making fun of them. But, and I, but again, I live in Austin too. So it's really, you know, more people down here are plant-based or vegan or vegetarian. So it's not, it's not totally weird. Um, I can imagine in different places, it might be, you know, different. Um, so they, you know, they're, pretty confident, um, in themselves, you know, and they, they explain like, this is, you know, this is healthier. It's better than for the environment. And, you know, we just, you know, try to encourage them as much as can. That is great. Do you think they'll stay when they're adults still stay plant-based? What do you think? Uh, you know, I hope so, but I think that, you know, especially college years, you know, people, kids, I remember when I was a teenager, I was like, ah, I just want to do everything different than my parents, you know, kind of thing. But I also think that they'll come back to it because I think that the way we are raised and habits that are built, um, I think really kind of help set that foundation. And so, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to guess. I hope so. But, you know, I think that eventually they will, they will settle into it because I mean, just for the health benefits, you know, um, and then, for the animals and everything. So I hope so. Did you ever show them a film like Game Changers? Because I know with with young men that sometimes resonates. We did. We have watched Game Changers. We watched, I think we've watched Forks Over Knives. Um, gosh, I think I we watched What the Health. Um, so they have, they've watched, a, you know, a, a few of them. And so I think the Game Changers definitely helped um, kind of solidify that, hey, you know, Protein is not a problem. You can still be really muscular and strong and work out. 
um, and be vegan. And so I think that that really definitely resonated with them. Okay. So, you know, I told you before I went on that we play this game with my Zoomunity, the people that are watching on YouTube that are in the chat, who do you look like? What celebrity? Because I, I feel like it was a, a country singer. And one of the viewers said Martina Mc, McBride. And I can see that she's very pretty. So check her out. And I'm not sure who she is. I guess she's a singer. So there you go, Kim. Everybody oh, looks like somebody. <laughs> That's awesome. That is funny. So what do you have time to exercise in your busy life? Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes, for sure. I'm actually training for a half marathon. I'm going to do the, the Austin half marathon in gosh, what's yeah. About oh, Emmy Lou Harris. We're getting an Emmy Lou Harris. I could so, sort of see that too. Do you sing by any chance? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Um, a half I marathon is 13.1 miles. Yeah. Yeah, 13.1. Yeah, I did almost eight miles last weekend. So I'm getting up there, you know, training, adding it about a mile a week. Um, and I cannot even imagine. I, I, could, I, I mean, I don't think I can run a block. That is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, I've done them before. This is probably my fourth or fifth half marathon in the past 10 years. So it definitely, you have to be careful. You have to train, you know, carefully. And, but I do resistance training too, lifting weights. Um, I go to something called Camp Gladiator. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but Camp Gladiator is kind of this outdoor group workout. Um, and my, my own like personal trainer, I used to train with her just one-on-one. -on -one. She's not doing one-on-ones anymore. She just started doing the coaching with Camp Gladiator. And I was like, I can't do this without you because I, I just want to show up and have somebody tell me what to do when it comes to like, you know, lifting weights. And so I started going to her Camp Gladiator um, workouts three days a week at 4.45 in the morning. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Are you even awake at that time? Barely. I have to go to bed so early. I'm like, all right, honey, it's your time to put the kids to bed tonight because I got to go to bed. Um, but it's like, I feel great and ready to go for the rest of the day. You know, once you've got that workout in and you're like, you know, I, I'm so much more productive on those days after I would do that, yeah. you know, that it's definitely worth it. Yeah, I agree. If I don't exercise first thing in the morning, it does not get done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us, like, do, are you eating any differently now that you're training for a marathon? You know, I'm not, you know, I, I, I just eat more. I think, you know, I'm more hungry on the days that I do long runs. So I just eat more. Um, I, I get plenty of protein. I mean, I, I kind of calculate and make sure that I'm, you know, getting, you know, my 10, at least 10% protein, but it's like, I don't even have to try. Like it, it just happens because, you know, even like using soy curls, very high protein. Um, you know, I'm usually close to 15 to 20% protein without even trying, but really for training for a, a half marathon, you gotta have lots of carbs, you know? So plant-based eating actually is really great for training for a half marathon. And actually one of the ladies who um, goes to our 445 uh, Camp Gladiator workout, she's vegan and she's an ultra marathoner. And so- Wow, seriously? Yeah. It, like, gosh, she should come on the show. That's amazing. I know, yes. So I'm always like asking her, I'm like, hey, how, how, long, how do you run that much? I mean, she's like up at 3.30 in the I morning. I just don't get how you like, 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 don't you have to go to the bathroom like at some point? Yeah. So when you're doing that really long distance running, I mean, you just go like while you're running, I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, so Susanna, who's watching live says, can you give some more specific details on the boot camp? She'd like to refer some friends to it. And I've been posting the link in the chat on YouTube and in the show notes. If you guys would like to sign up, it's absolutely free and it starts on January 29th. And don't forget, she also has a wonderful book. Yeah, so the challenge starts on the 29th. It's Monday through Friday, uh, five days, and we'll be doing, I'll do a master class in the morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. And so about an hour, just really going through all the science behind, you know, plant-based eating, you know, how to do it the right way, really focusing on whole plants versus processed foods. Um, and then in the afternoon at 1 p.m. Central Time, we'll be doing, I'll be doing a cooking demo. So like this. And so you get both the science, you know, the what and the why, but also the how with the cooking. 
And so five days, um, you'll get access to a workbook, the recipes, access to the Facebook group. Um, I'll be giving away prizes um, every class and even in the Facebook group. Um, so it's a lot of fun, um, definitely worth it. So send the link to your friends. Um, it's a great, you know, kind of introduction, but also reboot too. I mean, I, I've, I've had people who, like I said, you know, have been eating this way for 20 years and they come away learning something new. And so it's really good for everybody. Nice. Nancy says this has been so encouraging. Run us through a day's worth of eating, like maybe yesterday, because today, obviously, we're in the middle of the day, so we don't know what. Ooh, let's see. What am I eating? Um, gosh, it really varies. Um, well, my breakfast, I get into like, you know, I'm just simple. And so I'll either do for breakfast, I'll either do avocado toast on Ezekiel bread with um, some uh, everything bagel seasoning. And I always put a handful of greens on top. So arugula is my favorite. Um, I had pomegranate seeds for breakfast with, with my arugula toast this morning. I love those. Um, so I usually, I try to eat a fruit, you know, every meal um, or snack on fruit. Um, let's see, gosh, I'm, I can't remember <laughs> what I ate yesterday. Well, I'll just give you a, a few ideas, um, different grain and veggie bowls, like just, you know, the steamable broccoli and some brown rice and oil-free dressings. Last um, time you came on, you made bowls. And, you know, I, I, I thought sort of was a broccoli snob because I, I love broccoli. I have it every day for lunch just because it's my favorite. And I was visiting, um, I went to Memorial in Orange County this weekend and I was staying with somebody and all she had was frozen. And I was like, no, but it was good. It was really good. It was Costco organic broccoli. I was really impressed. I'm kind of a broccoli snob too, because I love it too. I, you know, of all the frozen veggies, the one I, that's my favorite is my HEB organics. Um, they're, you know, I don't know. It's just, it tastes better as uh, greener, just really fresh. I love the small florets. I love um, small florets too. I, I, I just, I don't know when I buy the whole thing, the stock is, I mean, I like it, but I love the little florets too. I like, I don't like the florets. Such a picky person, aren't we? Yes. It's like, once you find what you like, you just like, eh, that's what I like. Um, yeah. I'll tell you what we're having tonight. We're having um, pizza where I love, we buy the um, plant strong pizza kits from Rip Esselstyn's plant strong. Um, and so I will make um, pineapple and spinach pizza with their sauce, um, some nutritional yeast uh, sprinkled on top for the cheesy flavor. Um, so yeah, we're going to have some pizza tonight. Um, but I'll do, I mean, there's just, I, we make enchiladas, spaghetti with, I love to use the soy curls. Um, um, I'll just put some spices, uh, and saute them in a pan, dry saute them after, you know, rehydrating them. Um, and add that on top of, you know, some just pasta marinara. So it just really, you know, adds, especially with my boys, add some more protein, uh, for them and, so, I mean, it's just super simple. That's a, that's one, like we eat almost every week. We'll do tacos, fajitas. Um, yeah, just, I mean, you know, it's just, it's simple. It's really, it's really I know. easy. I, I think that is the biggest thing that trips people up is thinking they've got to have these. I, I mean, what were they cooking before? This is the thing when people say, I don't know what, I mean, like, what were you making before? Because if you were going through the drive through this is going to require a little bit more effort. But I mean, yeah. I, I, we just... You know, when you say it's funny, you know, I I know what I eat every day because I just I, like it's Tuesday, so therefore it's tostadas. You know, all right. and I feel bad because I have a friend. We play trivia on Tuesday night with a group of local vegans, and um, it, it so she'll, she'll pick me up and I say come for dinner, but it's all you know. I feel bad every time she comes. Same thing. It's Tuesday. What else am I supposed to have? Tostada Tuesday. You know what I mean. And yes. I, batch, I batch cook the rice, the recipe's free on YouTube, and then I just take it out every week and, you know, until I have to make it again, which I love batch cooking. I could not have done this for 47 years without batch cooking, I'll tell you. No way. Yes, absolutely. So I think it's the number one most important thing is, is in a lot of people watching like Thomasina love the, the Costco broccoli, say it's perfect for my curry in a hurry. And some people even air fry it. Yeah, the broccoli is very good air fried. 
Yeah. That's one thing I haven't done with my broccoli broccoli yet is the air fry it because I just kind of, you know, it's, it's the, oh, I always steam my broccoli. I just, you know, it's just what I do, but you mostly know, I, I steam it I too, but once in a while, it's kind of funny. Usually when I air fry it, I do the broccolini because it's a little longer and it's kind of fun to eat, but when in doubt air fry, you know, if you don't right. vegetable air fry it, it'll taste very, very right. delicious for <laughs> sure. Do you, do you do anything for fun? Cause now you're so busy doing the boot camp. Well, you know what I, I really liked about the book? I love acronyms because they help me remember stuff. But yeah. I love the little acronym for health right here because yeah, I, I love those those things. Just I can remember better. But uh, absolutely. Do you have time to do anything for fun? Book club, you know, watch, binge I, watching a show? Ted Lasso. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Oh, when it ended, it was so sad, wasn't it? Oh, he was. Yes. Like, I'm like, oh, I, I can't. I'll, I won't embarrass myself and tell you how many times I watched it over again because it's just there's nothing Lasso. else. Like there's nothing else better. I'm like. That's a, it's I love shows like that. Like, uh, well, you know, you, if you yeah, I mean, if you like the uplifting feeling, uh, yeah, the extraordinary attorney woo. What is it called? The Ex extraordinary attorney woo. It's on Netflix and it's about an autistic Korean lawyer. You got to watch it with with subtitles, not dubbing. The, I, I like shows that, that make me laugh and also make me feel good. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because all the negativity out there, like I just, it's just too much. And so yeah. having, you know, some really uplifting, fun shows like like that, it's just, it's such, uh, you such need a big it At the end of the day, yeah. for sure, you need it. Well, you are just wonderful. Congratulations on the book, staying as Amazon bestseller. We appreciate you guys when you buy our books because it really helps and it helps more people know about plant-based. Yep, Deborah agrees, loves attorney. Well, I hope that show comes back, by the way. And after the boot camp, what's next for you? Oh gosh, I'm so focused on that right now. Um, let's see, I've got, I'm going to be on. I think you're going to be on the the Truth About Health Summit. I'm going to be on that summit as well. Oh, nice. What yeah. are you going? Are you going to cook or are you going to talk? I haven't decided yet, so I got to think about that. Yeah. yeah. First, first year I cook, I talk, but I, I I really, you know, at the end of the day, I I think I like cooking better. I think yeah. it helps people more sometimes. You know. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Because you, it's, I mean, you've got to have the information, but you got to know how to apply it. Like, okay, that's great and all, but like, how do I do this? You know? Yeah. I remember when Colin Campbell said to me, you know, the science is great, but you can't eat the science. So, you know, it's, just, awesome. and, and, and the thing is, is the recipe, I mean, the recipe was the shortest part of this, this broadcast today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's so fast, like literally five minutes, you know, it's super easy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I wish you every success. I actually signed up for the boot camp. I mean, what the heck, you know, it's yeah. free. that's right. It's free. <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Kim. It was a pleasure reconnecting again and, and text me afterwards because I want to give you that phone number for right. the photographer. So yes. thank her. you so much. Thank well, you thank for having you. me. Oh, it's such a pleasure and good luck with your boot camp and congratulations again on this wonderful book. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back today at 2 p.m. Pacific time for Vinegar Spice and Everything Nice with your friends, Nick and Thomas. They're going to be making some really interesting things like a blackberry balsamic glazed portobello mushroom with, oh gosh, Cajun carrots over shiitake grits with a pistachio gremolata that's so that's too fancy for me kim you know what i mean right uh, that sounds amazing <laughs> shows tomorrow we've got dr esser at nine and dr neil barnard at 11 have you ever you must have tried the california balsamics because you were on the show before and everybody gets yes. yeah i have so many of them those are like staple just put on any salad or green bowl love those yes absolutely good i'm glad you enjoy them again thanks so much kim take care Bye bye, bye.